Hello, everybody. This is President Donald Trump. I don't smoke and I don't drink, but there's a fantastic show called Liquid Lunch, and their sponsor is Question Tequila, and it's hosted by John Tobacco. Booze, cigarettes, tobacco, it's all here with great insight on politics, culture, and everything else. Tune in every day to Liquid Lunch. Welcome back. Uh, if that wasn't Donald Trump, I think it was, but it may have been uh, John D. Domenico, great friend of the show. And uh, I love all those little Donald Trump bumps. Hopefully we'll get the real guy here soon. We got the real guys with us again, back for a second time to mix it up on Liquid Lunch. John Burnett, managing partner of uh, One Empire Group, and Adam Baumel, Democratic strategist. Guys, Joe Biden stepped in it again, which he's been doing for years, and he's got hoof and mouth, uh, stepped in it, everything, um, with this racism stuff, with the segregation stuff, and uh, Cory Booker's coming at him for some gratuitous publicity. Uh, but here's what Nancy Pelosi had to say. I think that authenticity is the most important uh characteristic that uh, candidates have to convey to the American people. And Joe Biden is authentic. Uh, he has lived his life. Uh, he, he considers certain things a resource that he has worked across the aisle. That's what he was saying. Hey, Adam, that's it's your party. Um, yes, and, it is. Uh, <laughs> how does how's Nancy Pelosi square this up with the rest of the progressives in the party? Well, I understand where she's coming from. She's trying to keep peace within the party. A divided party is not one that will uh, will stand strong. It's one that will fall. Um, but I think there's a lot of problems with the Biden uh, nom uh, nomination possibility just in general. I mean, we're seeing him holding a lot of these uh, these massive fundraisers with the corporate and, and the wealthy elite, and he's telling them things will not fundamentally change. I mean, if you're not looking to make things change, why are you trying to oppose the current president? Um, and I don't feel like he represents the values that Democratic voters and even independent voters are looking to, uh, to try to move forward to if they're looking to make a change from, uh, from the Trump presidency. What's he going to do, Johnny? <laughs> Well, you know, we already know from eight years under Obama that nothing is going to change for the positive. Look, the thing is, is that everyone knows that the African-American vote is the mother's milk of the Democratic Party, and he pissed them off. So he's in jeopardy right now, and he's going to try, have to try to find his way back into the good graces if he wants to perform well in the primaries because, you know, Kamala, uh, Senator Harris, Senator Booker, Senator uh, War, all the senators, including uh, Bernie Sanders, will be coming after him. Why? Because he's in the lead, and I think he's going to be dropping, you know, uh, precipitously. The, um, I heard, I, I watch Morning Joe in the morning to get my, get my juices flowing, to get me really ticked off at what they're saying and how... I call this segment that we do every so often morning joke because most of what they do to me is is a joke. But uh, to your point about Joe Biden needing that African-American vote, Reverend Al Sharpton was on there and uh, he said that the, the African-American vote is going to reject, I quote, the latte limo liberal crowd. And one of the reasons that Joe had the biggest support is because people thought he would get the Obama African-American support. And taking that away, even Reverend Al said he could be in trouble. What do you think, Adam? I think he's right on point. Um, I mean, if, even if you look back decades ago, Anita Hill, um, the crime bill, there's so many instances where he's really shown that he's not a friend to the African-American community. And I mean, a lot of those things didn't stick because, again, he was the vice president for a historic presidency. Whether you agree with uh, the things that Obama did or not, getting the first black president was historic. Um, and a lot of people kind of attach Biden to that. And, and I don't think it's going to work this time around. So if he goes head to head with like Kamala Harris, Cory Booker, he's got a problem. It doesn't matter who he goes to head to head with. <laughs> They're going to try to stop him from being the nominee. The thing is, when you look at uh, Biden's baggage, that didn't come out. Why? Because no one wanted to, to disrupt the opportunity to elect the first black president. So these things didn't come out the bag. But now that Biden's out there in the front all by himself, and guess what? Obama could put an end to this right now with just one tweet. But guess what? Oh, 
President Obama's not walking into this. He's saying, hey, Joe, you're on your own. You're on your Thanks own. a lot for getting me elected twice. Yeah, and, um, <laughs> you know, every, every time you turn around, it seems like some of this baggage that should have come out then right. is. And uh, we recently talked about this just a week or show, ago on the show, that uh, he was at a fundraiser bragging about how he authored the crime bill that sent millions of African Americans to incarceration for minor nonviolent crimes. So this stuff has got to hurt him with the, the African American community. Democratic whip, Clyburn, yeah. came out and said, you know what? We should give credit, some credit to Biden for authoring and championing the uh, 94 crime bill. That's the most insane thing I've ever heard. And that's going to cause more disruption in the African American community. What do you think, Adam? Is this crime bill thing going to keep haunting him also? <sighs> So I think you're not going to see a lot of the media really talking about it a lot. Uh, there's a lot. There's always going to be a, uh, a reasoning to trying to defend the, uh, the status quo, which is what essentially Biden represents. He represents the status quo. And not, I don't think it's a good status quo. I don't think it's something that we need continuing on in politics in, in either party. But um, I, I don't see him going away anytime soon. I think he's going to continue dipping in the polls. But I, I guess we'll see. Two-minute warning. Uh, one thing Joe Biden participated in with Barack Obama was sending $150 billion of USD over to Iran, uh, and oh, Iran's gosh. probably getting a little confused <laughs> right now because they're like, hey, wait, these guys were sending us $150 billion in cash, and uh, Trump's guys are just about to send the army <laughs> over there. Um, we talked about it a little before, but um, Trump came out with some tweets. I think he's kind of stepped back and said, you know, he only found out, they said about 10 minutes before, which is crazy. Um, but as crazy as they say he is, it seems like he hit the reason button. Regardless of the optics, I'm happy. Again, I, I know I said this earlier, and I don't, I don't want to keep beating a dead horse here, but I'm happy we didn't go to, you know, attack them. Uh, we need to be trying to ramp down tensions in the, in the Middle East, and uh, I'm, I'm really happy. Again, I, I have no problem giving Trump credit when I think he deserves credit. I think he does here. His tweets. I'm, uh, let, let's show our audience what, what we're talking about on Monday. They shot down an unmanned drone flying in international waters. We were cocked and loaded to retaliate last night on three different sites. Uh, when I asked how many will die, 150, sir, was the answer. General, 10 minutes before the strike, I stopped it. Um, so I, you would think they would tell the president a little before that, that how many people were going to die. But it sounds like it was a pretty humane decision, Johnny. It's humane. It's stable and it's decisive. We have the right person in the, right, in the White House at the right time. The uh, president said he's cocked and loaded. We're locked and loaded all the time when we got great guests like this. We bring you the real people, real talk, who know where the rubber meets the road. I want to thank John Burnett, Adam Baumel, who will have you guys back again soon. I want to thank you for tuning in every day now for six weeks of Liquid Lunch. Stay right there. Maddie Mary, right after this. Thank you for tuning in every day now for six weeks of Liquid Lunch. Stay right there. Maddie Mary, right after this.